Palmerston famously said, as the Roman in days of old held himself free from indignity, when he could say, Civis Romanus Sum, so also a British subject, in whatever land he may be, shall feel confident that the watchful eye and the strong arm of England will protect him against injustice and wrong. Jimmy Lai is a Hong Kong businessman and British citizen currently imprisoned in Hong Kong, facing life in prison for breaking Hong Kong's controversial national security law. Though born in mainland China, Lai escaped to Hong Kong at the age of 12 as a stowaway on a boat in 1959, when Hong Kong was still a British colony. He began working as a child labourer in a fabric factory. It wasn't long before he had set up his own garment empire with 2,400 shops across 30 countries. But in 1989, when the infamous scenes of the Tiananmen Square massacres made headlines across the world, Lai pivoted to the world of media and politics, setting up his own newspaper, Apple Daily, and becoming a staunch advocate of democracy in Hong Kong and a fierce critic of the Chinese Communist Party's regime. In June 2020, the controversial Hong Kong national security law was passed, criminalizing any act of secession, subversion or collusion with foreign or external forces. Lai attended pro-democracy protests and called the law a death knell for Hong Kong. But he was later arrested in August of that year for alleged collusion with foreign forces and he has remained imprisoned, facing multiple criminal proceedings since December 2020. Jimmy Lai's son, Sebastian, who is also a British citizen, has criticised the government for not explicitly calling for his father's release. As today marks the 1,000th day of Mr. Lai's imprisonment, I met Sebastian to discuss, as he sees it, the British government's abandonment of his father. Sebastian, tell me, what happened to your father? How did he come to be in this position? And what do you think the British government ought to do about it? So, when he arrived in Hong Kong, it was the first time he was counted as a person by any government. Um, and he went from working in a sweatshop to eventually having his own factory and then starting a company called uh, Giordano, which did uh, clothing. Um, and uh, all of that was going well, very well for him. Uh, and then the, the really pivotal point in his life where he went from being a, a businessman to a uh, activist for, for, for democracy and freedom was uh, the Tiananmen Square uh, massacre. Um, when the Tiananmen Square massacre happened, uh, Dad was, and, and, and many people in Hong Kong were completely, I mean, heartbroken is too light, too light of a word, but absolutely shattered. Because they, they realized that as China was liberalizing, economically, they weren't going to liberalize socially. So uh, my father decided that, um, you know, it's all well and good being a, a, a businessman. Um, but he was going to use his uh, skills and his ability of entrepreneurship to uh, further a greater cause. And he decided to uh, go into media because he believed that information is choice and, and, and choice is ultimately freedom. In 1995, he wrote an article uh, criticizing Li Pang, the, the butcher of Beijing, the mm -hmm. person who ordered the crackdowns, the, the murder of all the students. He criticised him using very strongly worded, um, um, and I'm, I'm not going to repeat this on the show. Oh, he used a wonderful insult. What was the it, insult? It, it, was a, it was a son of a turtle egg with a zero IQ. Right. right. Uh, and then he added that um, in the 5,000 year of history of, of Chinese people, it, 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 it saddens him that uh, someone like Li Pang would have existed. Um, so as you expect, Li Pang did not take that well. <laughs> um, his shops were closed in Beijing, and he was pressured to sell Giordano, the company that he had founded. Uh, so um, my dad knew that he had a choice. He could either try to, you know, he could either apologize and, and, and make a whole show out of it, or um, he could sell Giordano, make sure that he wasn't compromised. Because the thing is, if, if he knew that if he had business interests in China, they could always compromise him. Um, 
And so he decided to sell it and, and, and go full in, in, the, uh, in the media. When your father set up Apple Day in 1995, Hong Kong was still a British colony and freedom of the press was guaranteed. Another joint declaration, which was the method by which Hong Kong was handed back to China, it was agreed that Hong Kong's way of life and forms of government would be maintained for 50 years. That would get you to 2047. And the Chinese have arbitrarily broken those guarantees, haven't they? That's what makes the current situation so uh, um, outrageous. This is a financial centre that does not respect contracts. I think it really shows how Hong Kong and uh, China views this country. If uh, they're willing to step all over the agreements that, that they have made. They, they've called this agreement a historical document. Now, any contract at the moment you sign it becomes a historical document. So, so I think it's worth revisiting our relationship with, with, with Hong Kong. I mean, now that, now that this, this, this state has broken agreement with us, what are the consequences? And your father is in trouble, really, for calling Li Peng a turtle's egg and for going on a march in favour of democracy which was guaranteed under the Joint Declaration? It's, it's quite scary because under the National Security Law, which is incredibly opaque, he could face life imprisonment. But at my dad's age, even if it's 10 years, it, it could very well mean that I, I, I never see my father again. What do you think the British government should do? They should raise my father's case, a British citizen, at the highest level, with China and with Hong Kong. Um, they should call for his immediate release um, and, 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 and they should incentivize the, the behavior that they want to see. Do, do, they, do they want a, 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 a state, Hong Kong, uh, that just very cavalierly break agreements with, uh, with, with, with the United Kingdom or do they want to stand up for something, someone like my father who was willing to give up everything? everything in order to, 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 to protect the freedoms uh, that we all hold in this country. Well, Sebastian, thank you very much. It must be so difficult for you. Um, and your father has shown amazing courage in standing up for what he and many fellow Britons feel is right. Thank you.